What is going on Diablo 2 fans? Dabrunski here and I'm back with another episode from the Human Bot Project series. Today I did 1000 Mephisto runs. The cool thing about this video is it's almost a full circle sort of deal. This was the very first video I ever uploaded to my YouTube channel, 1000 Mephisto runs, but it was full of copyright music because I really didn't know what I was doing. So I wanted to remake this video and it is 1000 Mephisto runs with a twist. What is a twist? I'll cover that in a little bit, but just a quick reminder, if you guys ever want to hang out with me live on stream when I MF with hipster builds and kind of doing my level 99 grind now in single player, I'm streaming on Twitch. Link is, of course, in the description below, twitch slash debrunsky125. If you guys would like to give me a follow there, I'd really appreciate it. Other than that, guys, I really do hope you enjoy this video. Let's jump in. There's a couple things that I just want to briefly touch on before we jump into recapping the loot for this video. And the first is, what is the twist for these 1000 Mephisto runs? So instead of just farming Mephisto solely on his own, I cleared every single Bloodlord pack and every Travancle pack that was down there and Mephisto and popped the super chest behind him. So it's almost like a mixture of Travancle farming with Mephisto. And then for those that don't know, the Durians of Hate level 3 is an area level 83 area. So those Bloodlords actually have the ability to drop some crazy stuff and even uniques that are actually better than what Mephisto could drop even though the odds are a little bit less which little hint here I did drop some really nice stuff from them in this video. The second point I just want to touch on is what is the player's difficulty and how much MF and what character did I use for these 1000 Mephisto runs. So I had just under 400 MF and did player 7 difficulty. I was running a really niche full Talrash's setup using the Phoenix Room Word. I actually just recently made a video on this build. If you guys want to check it out, I have the link in the description below. But it's a really good combination of overall damage and percent MF. Now, you definitely don't have to run player 7. It's a little bit overkill for drops in this area. But really, I was just farming drops and experience at the same time because I had so much damage with this setup. And the third and final point that I want to mention is that I did not identify a single unique amulet or ringlet dropped in this video. I'm saving them for a bulk identification video in the future, but I did drop a total of 9 unique amulets from the Council, Bloodlords, and Mephisto combined with 15 unique rings in total. So I could potentially be sitting on some Maras or Metal Grids, SOJs or BK rings that I did not include in this video, even though I did drop a whole whack load of other really nice stuff which we'll dive into now. So guys, let's recap the loot. The first decent item dropped off of Mephisto on run 40. It's a unique pair of battle boots which rolled 45% MF War Travelers. These boots are actually an upgrade from the current boots that I was using on the Sorceress, but I have still yet to find a pair of 40 MF War Travs. On run number 72, my Sorceress hit level 92. Player 7 difficulty was actually giving my Sorceress a pretty decent amount of experience for her moderately high character level. 11 runs later, Mephisto drops an item that I've been hunting for for ages. It's an ethereal salad, which is the rock stopper. I want to pair this helmet with Treachery and Reaper's Toll for a more defensive base Act 2 mercenary setup in the future. Another amazing item drops on run 94. This time it's off of one of the council members, a magic jewel that rolled 15% increased attack speed with 21% fire resistance. This is the ideal jewel to pair with an Endario's Visage because it gives you 35% increased attack speed and negates the minus fire res penalty associated with the helmet. The same council members drop a unique death shroud on run 192. It rolled 15% lightning damage, 3 to lightning Ormus robes. This is an interesting item, but it's more of a novelty item in my opinion. I'm not a big fan of this armor being used on a lightning sorceress. Followed by a nice Geed's Grand Charm 7 runs later, rolling 132% extra gold find, 39% to magic find, and 13% reduced vendor prices. The Council and the Durians of Hate continue to drop nice items on run number 153. It's a set amulet which ruled Talrash's adjudication. Kinda cool dropping Talrash's amulet while running the full Tal set. The first big ticket item drops off of a Bloodlord a quarter of the way through this 1000 run project and unfortunately it's a super troll drop. It's a unique sacred armor which due to the area level and monster level of the Bloodlords can only rule Templar's Might. 
On Mephisto run 262, my Sorceress levels up to 93. Player 7 farming has been paying off in terms of total experience gained. An insane item drops from a Bloodlord 17 runs later. It's a unique unearthed wand, which is Death's Web. It ruled 2 to Poison and Bone skills with minus 47% enemy poison resistance. This is a super rare item that you would not typically expect to drop while magic finding the Durance of Hate level 3. Nothing special for about 60 runs until a council member drops a facet, which ruled a perfect minus 5 plus 5 die fire facet. I'm not sure where I'm going to use this facet yet, but it's definitely a really nice trophy drop. I've had really consistent drops off of the council members and that continues on run 370. I drop another Ruby Jewel of Fervor, but this one rolled even better than the previous jewel with 27% fire resistance. Mephisto drops an item on run 404 that I have only dropped one other time in Diablo 2. That is an ethereal pair of Scarab Shell Boots, which is Sandstorm Trex. This pair rolled 12 to strength and 15 to vitality, so I was pretty happy with this pair of boots. The first decent rare item drops off of Mephisto 9 runs later. The gloves rolled 2 to javelin and spear skills with 20% increased attack speed and 22% lightning resistance. Not the best possible rolls, but definitely a solid pair of Javazon gloves. A neat little double drop off of the council on run 468. It's a telling of bead set amulet with a plain poison and bone skiller, Grand Charm. I was surprised that at almost 500 runs into this project, I still hadn't dropped a high rune yet, but that changes really quickly. First, the super unique Voidbringer drops a jaw rune on run 490, followed by a jaw rune 14 runs later from the Spark Fist Council pack. That's some crazy RNG if you ask me. 16 runs after the second jaw rune, Mephisto drops one of the best single player rare circlets that I've ever found. It rolled 2 to assassin skills with 20 FCR and 19 to all resistances. I would love to cham this circlet in the future to make a dual claw wielding trapson. Another really nice facet drops on Mephisto run 550. This time the council drops a plus 5 minus 4 level up cold facet. I have never dropped a perfect cold facet in Diablo 2 but this was pretty close to that. Another high rune drops 20 runs later. This time the super unique Dragon Hand drops a Vex rune, marking the third high rune from this 1000 Mephisto run project. A Bloodlord boss pack drops another really nice TC87 unique just 12 runs later, demonstrating again that they are capable of dropping better uniques than Mephisto can. It's a unique Hydra Bow, which rolled a 6% mana leech, Wind Force. My Sorceress grows another level on Mephisto run 598, reaching her final level of 94 for this project. The very next run, Mephisto drops a Shaco that rolled 136 defense. I didn't really plan on including this drop in the video, but I think it gives people a good idea of how much time is typically invested in order to drop your first Shaco off of Mephisto. A really nice melee belt drops on Mephisto run 653. It's a nearly perfect string of ears that ruled 15% damage reduction and 8% life leech. This is an amazing item for any melee character. Followed by a nice skiller about 100 runs later, it rolled 1 to javelin spear skills with plus 6 to strength. A really interesting circlet drops from the council members on run 779 of this project. It's a 2 to Amazon skills, 30 faster run walk circlet with attack rating, life and lightning res. I'm not really sure which build would benefit from this circlet, but it's still a pretty cool drop. The final high rune of this 1000 run project drops off of the super unique Voidbringer. It's a Sir rune. I've never dropped this rune off of a monster before, so it was a pretty exciting drop for me. 
The very last noteworthy draw from this project drops from a Bloodlord on run 913. It's an ethereal 39% MF Steel Skull. This is a really cool helmet to equip on your mercenary when you're trying to minimax the total percent of MF that you can stack. Well guys, there you have it. That wraps up this human bot project. 1000 Mephisto runs with a twist. What did you guys think of the drops? Honestly, I thought it was amazing. Basically, I collected half of the runes required to make Last Wish, dropped a ton of unique jewelry, amazing facets, and super rare TC87 uniques like Deathweb and Windforce, except I did have that one trollish Templar's Might, but it is what it is. Anyways guys, I really do hope you enjoyed this video and possibly you consider maybe MFing the Durians of Hate Level 3, hitting all of the boss packs there, but guys, as always, if you could throw a like on this video, share it, and even consider subscribing if you're new to my channel. I post new weekly content and stream twice a week on Twitch. Again, link for my Twitch channel. It is in the description below as well. So if you could give me a sub on YouTube and a follow on Twitch, I'd really appreciate it. Other than that, guys, hope you have a fan freaking day, and I'll see you on my next video or live stream. Peace out.